How's it going people? Simon Slabber you and this is the Chosen Commander quest guide. Start to finish, let's have at it. So to start off you need to be in Lumbridge Cellar and first of all quest requirements and level requirements. So for this you need to have completed Land of the Goblins, you need 46 agility, 46 thieving and 46 strength. You'll also be needing to kill a few enemies and they're averaging around a level 125. So with that said, let's move on to items. So, item wise, you'll be needing a tinderbox, a light source of some kind, a pickaxe, some food, armor, and a weapon. For the tinderbox, it does work if it's in your tool belt. The pickaxe, however, does not. The light source, you can have many different versions up to you, but the seer's headband, the mining helmet, or a candle and lamp is probably your best bet. Uh, for armor wise and weapon wise I'd probably go with either melee or mage simply because some of the enemies you kill will just keep using protect from range. So let's get on with it then shall we? So starting off we're in Lumbridge we're going to do a little bit of preparations before we actually start the quest. First off you want to squeeze through this hole here and head into the little maze. Straight away head directly south and this wall here, some of you may or may not have done it already, but you need to clear this wall here. To do that you need to stand one square away from it and use your pickaxe on it. As you can see I've actually already done it. And basically this will allow quick passage between here and the Lumbridge Cave system. Which we will need later on in the quest just to save some time. So once you've done that, simply head over to Dorgish Khan and we'll get this quest on the go. So if you don't remember how to get it, simply head south as soon as you've travelled with the goblin. And you're now in the northeast corner of Dorbish Khan. So from here you want to head pretty much directly south and eventually you'll come across the quest start. So to start the quest you need to come right by here and go ahead and talk to Captain Unduk. So as soon as you talk to him, choose option 2. Then option 1, then option 1, and then option 1. As soon as you've done that, head slightly to your north and up the stairs right in front of you. And then head into the large building slightly to your southeast, this one right here. Once you're here, look for the largest goblin, he's called Munich, go ahead and talk to him. Or her, apparently, as there is a granny goblin. As soon as you've talked to her, head just back outside that building, and to the northern side of it, you'll find another fellow we need to talk to called Torzek. So go ahead and talk to him. So first off, choose option 4, calm down. Then choose option 1. Then option 1. And now you need to talk to the four little small goblins right next to you. Simply ask them what they ate yesterday. Doesn't matter what they say, just simply ask them about what they had to eat. And the idea is you need to work out which foods that sick goblins have eaten and which the healthy ones haven't and then you've got to work out a bunch of other stuff but because I'm too lazy and I'm awesome I'm gonna just simply skip that and you can do this exactly the same way I do simply talk to Captain Unduk and tell him you've worked out which foods are poisoned and then you want to head back downstairs and head almost directly south from here past the markets now typically you need to find out what those what the two poisoned foods are, then you need to go to the market, speak to them to find out the sellers who actually the sellers to the goblins the poison the food, but well we don't actually need to do that because we already know what's gonna happen. So as soon as you've just gone south of the markets, head towards the east and you'll find this human here. And this is the culprit, so go ahead and pick option one. As soon as you do, he'll start a fight. 
And that just saved you about 15 minutes worth of messing about. Happy days. So simply start attacking him, don't even bother talking to him, and rip him a new one. So all you need to do for this bloke is literally just take his life down. Once he gets to about a third left, he'll put his protection prayers on as you can see and a portal will appear behind him. Tell him to look behind him and eventually Zanuck will appear out of nowhere. He'll change his protection prayer to range and then you can just finish him off. So as soon as you've beaten him, all you need to do is talk to Zanuck. However, if you're having the same problem I'm having on screen now as you can see, it still appears as if he's attacking me even though he's not. To fix it, all you need to do is simply walk to the west and outside of his attack range and eventually he'll stop trying to go after you and then you can come back and talk to Zanuck. Like this. So once you've talked to Zanuck, you then want to choose option 3, then option 1, then option 1, and you'll have a little cutscene, and you'll now appear as Zanuck in Bandos' throne room. So now you're controlling the goblin. Head slowly to your southwest, and you'll see this bunch of goblins right by here. We now need to climb on top of them. So first off, you want to climb the bottom one, then jump to the north, then to your southeast, then to your east, to your east again, then onto the massive one, to your north. At this point you'll have a little cutscene and you'll look into the scrying pool. So simply run through this. Once you regain control, keep heading to your north. So jump another three times over to the platform on the side with the crossbow. Go ahead and grab the crossbow. And then use it on the spear tip. And you'll swing across to the throne. Pick up the pendant on the throne, and you'll automatically jump down. As soon as you jump down, the goblin thing in front of you will kneel down. Go ahead and look into the pool again. You'll have another short cutscene. And now you need to head all the way west to exit. So as you go over there, you are now the Goblin Daddy and everything will move out of the way for you. Goblin Daddy! Head on through and there's a portal there, just jump in. And you'll reappear with Zanuck. So once you regain control, go ahead and say let go, option 1. And we now need to head up to the council room. So to get to the council room from here, you need to head back in through the markets and head all the way north into the main plaza. So once you're all the way north, there will be a set of stairs right in the centre. Go ahead and climb them. Soon as you do, a cutscene will ensue. So as soon as you get the options, you want to choose option 2, then option 3, then option 1, and that'll be the end of that. Zanuck will then ninja kill the fella, and then you'll need to talk to Unduck. Choose option 1, and then option 4, just tell him you'll start looking now, so you can skip most of the text. 
So as soon as you regain control, we now need to head all the way south, and we're actually heading to the Dorgush Khan Agility area. So if you've never been there before, then this will show you how to get there. Head straight south, out of the plaza and past the market, until you hit the little water pool, as we seen last time. Right by here, only this time head towards the south on the west side, and there will be a set of stairs. Climb up these. Stay on this form, on this platform, and head directly south. Once you've gone all the way south, you'll notice another set of stairs we can now climb up. So head up them. As soon as you do, you're now in the agility area. So once you're here, head south slightly, and you'll find on your western side a set of ladders to climb down. As soon as you're down, head directly south. And eventually, you will bump into Zanuck sitting down at the dead end corner. Once you're here, go ahead and talk to Zanuck. Sit down next to him, option 4. Say nothing, option 4. And again, say nothing, option 4. And again, option 4, say nothing, until eventually you have to say something. Tell him you did the right thing. Then option 2. Choose whichever option you like, until eventually the option comes up, what do you wish happened? And then tell him you'll help build that world. And he'll eventually leave with you. You'll have another cutscene then, and you're back in the council room. And Zanuck will now be banished. Go through whatever options you choose. Doesn't particularly matter. Either way, Zanuck is getting out of here. So as soon as the cutscene's over, you'll just be outside the council room. Go ahead and talk to Zanuck. Run through all of his options. And then eventually say goodbye. And he'll teleport away. So once he's gone, go ahead and talk to Captain Unduk. Ask him about the task. Say you'll do it, and he'll give you a full set of ham. At this point you want to teleport to Lumbridge, as we're now going to go into the ham hideout. So for those of you who don't remember how to get to the ham hideout, you simply need to Follow the northern wall of Lumbridge all the way around until it disappears pretty much. Then just keep heading west slightly and you'll hit the little mud path. And on the northern side of it eventually you'll find this broken house. At this point you want to equip your full ham. And you'll want to right click pick lock on the trap door. So as soon as you're down here, head southeast and head through the door. And we want to head down the southeastern passage from this main chamber. And in here you will find Johannes Olsbrecht. Go ahead and talk to him. And as soon as you do, you want to choose option 3. Then you want to choose option 1, then option 3, 
and tell him you'll go there now option one. So now you want to head over to our down. So go ahead and home port to Ardy. And we'll be heading to another ham hideout. So at this point head north until you eventually hit the windmill. And go ahead and talk to Milton the Miller inside. So choose option 2, then option 1, and eventually he'll show you the secret passage. So jump down the ladder. And we now need to save a goblin. So to do this you want to head to the eastern side of this cave. The easiest way is through the giant big doors next to the ramp. Though it doesn't actually make much difference which one you go through. And you want to head to the very southeast corner. You'll find on the south wall there's a notice board. This part may or may not be different for other people, I'm unsure. So I'll just tell you how to do it. Here is a list of names and a bunch of days. To find out what you need, you need to talk to this ham guard right here. And go ahead and tell him you need to see the prisoner, then ask about the letter. At this point, ask what day it is today. Make a note of what he says. So for me, it's goal day. Go ahead and check the notice board for whatever day you were given. So for me, a Sam could be any of the others for you. What we need to do is pickpocket that person and you'll find him in the western room with the ramp. So as mine is Golday and Sam, I now need to find Sam in here and pickpocket him. Whatever he is. Here's the fella. So pickpocket your ham guard and you'll get a lo uh, little note from him. Once you've got that, head back over to the southeast side of this little cave and then talk to that same guard that told us what day it is and tell him you have a letter. He'll now allow you to get into the prison. Go ahead and open the door and in here you'll find a key on the north side on the floor. Go ahead and pick that up and crack open the cage. Talk to the goblin and you'll find out it's Grubfoot. Tell him you're here to rescue him and then tell him to wait there a minute, you'll come back for him. So head back out through the door and head to your west slightly. This door right in front of you is actually locked and we now need to open it. So head into the kitchen. It's the room with all the meat and stuff on top of the table and you'll find a hole in the wall on the east side of that room. Go ahead and jump through that. Crack open the door on the western side as that's also locked. Now it isn't and do exactly the same with the east side. So once those two are open head back into the prison and talk to Grubfoot again. And this time tell him to come along. Let's go. Tell him you'll distract the guard, and then he can make a break for it. So head through the door, and make sure you're standing on the north side of this guard before you talk to him. This will make him turn his back to the door. Go ahead and wait until the goblin passes, then just tell him never mind. Head into the same room as Grubfoot. Go ahead and talk to him again. And this time tell him to wait at the west door. Head through the hole in the wall into the kitchen. This will distract the guard. The guard will come in and start talking to you. Go ahead and say yes. Meanwhile Grubfoot will sneak past. Then tell him he was making a sandwich. So 
So head out through the door and then head to the opposite room to the north where Grubfoot is currently hiding. Once you're there, talk to Grubfoot once again and tell him to follow you. Head through the eastern door and as you make your way through these crates eventually an alarm will go off and you'll get surprised and caught. Grubfoot will stun the guard and this point tell him to get out of here. So run out and up the ramp through the giant doors and at this point you'll have a little cutscene. So at this point Sigmund will now attack you, go ahead and start beating on him. Eventually Xanag will come across and he'll switch his prey to range. Once he does, just simply kill Sigmund. As soon as he does, you'll have a little conversation with Xanak. If you don't choose the right option, he won't actually kill Sigmund. The correct option is Xanak, don't kill him. As soon as you say that, Xanak will kill him and then he'll start attacking you. This part is very, very annoying. Basically, Xanak will now constantly regenerate health until you choose the right option at the end of every fight. Just a word of warning, make sure you're not using any damage over time effects, such as bleeds or combustion for mage, as if the chat options come up while that is still going, it'll instantly knock the chat off. So for the first one, tell Xanak you won't kill him, The second option says Zanuck what happened to you. So at this point I couldn't actually find any guide telling me what you meant to say, so you simply have to run through the options, but the general idea is try and bring Zanuck back to life, refuse to kill him, and then tell Zanuck that he's being possessed by the pendant. And eventually he should stop attacking you and he'll throw the pendant away. But am I your enemy? Is this one? At this point you need to kill her again. As I said, this is very, very annoying. Sorry that I didn't manage to cut it out and give you the right answers, but yeah. Tell Zanuck that he's being controlled. Tell him that it's the pendant and that he needs to take it off. And then tell him he controls his destiny. At which point you'll take the pendant off, lob it down, and the goblin high priest will pick it up.
At which point you'll teleport away and you'll be underground somewhere. So at this point you simply want to run to your west. And once you go so far, an earthquake will come. At which point you want to call through the fallen rocks right next to you. Ask him if he's okay and tell him you'll get over there now. Go ahead, right click these rocks and clear them. This will open up a passageway so we can now go save Zanuck. Go ahead and talk to Zanuck. And tell him to try grappling it across the chasm. Tell him you can see where he can catch it. And at this point you need to direct him towards the little sticky out bit that he can actually get hold of. Tell him he's overshot it, and eventually you'll just start being one of those whiny babies. Just tell him to shut up and get on with it, and eventually he'll finally grapple it, and we can get on with this. So, once he's back over, we now need to head out, so head to your west and through the cave. At this point you'll appear in Juna's cave system. As soon as you run past Juna, she'll start talking to Zanuck. At this point you can go ahead and skip all the chatter. It basically tells Zanuck that this is destiny to be Bandos' little bitch, pretty much. Ignore that, follow the pathway around until eventually you hit the cave entrance to Lumbridge Swamp, Little Maze. So once you're in here, you want to head to the northwestern side where there's a rock you can jump over. As soon as you jump over that, all you need to do is now head directly north. And if you remember that little passageway we opened up at the very beginning before we start the quest, this is how you get through it. And this is why you needed to do it. If not, and you didn't bother doing that, you'll have to go all the way around. And yeah, it takes a while. Catch you in 10 minutes. Anyway, head into Dorgish Khan. Soon as you do, a guard will start talking to you, telling that everyone's under attack. So ignore him and head into Dorgish Khan itself. And head towards the centre of the plaza. Center of the plaza, you can tell by the little watermark, and eventually you'll run across Captain Udak. Go ahead and talk to him, and basically he'll tell you the Bandos is threatening to wipe all the goblins out. So run through every single one of his options. Once you've exhausted all options, go ahead and say goodbye. First things first, we now need to head up to the council. So head to your north and head through the central stairs. Up we go. You'll have a little cutscene. And basically they're trying to decide what to do about bandos. So quickly skip through his ultimatum. At this point, choose whichever option you want, it doesn't particularly matter. this point, Zanuck will disappear. Head back up those stairs, and right next to you you'll find the Goblin Scribe in the northern room. 
Go ahead and talk to him. Then choose option 1, asking him what to do. Then say you'll help him. Say you'll go now. And we now need to head back downstairs. So once you're downstairs, head towards your southeast where we started this quest originally. And head east through that little short passage there and into the north room. Here you'll find Tegdak. Go ahead and talk to him. And tell him that the scribe sent you to pick up the artifacts. Soon as you do, he should give you a box of artifacts. Good times. At this point, you now need to head back up towards the scribe. And we now need to give him the artifacts. So, to get to the scribe, you just need to head north again. And up the northern stairs. And go ahead and hand over the artifact. Tell him you'll go now, and we now need to head into the mines. At this point you can put your gear back on, as we will be fighting the boss soon enough. Head back down the stairs, and head through the northeast exit. And once you're here, head towards the centre and you will eventually come across Mistegg. Go ahead and talk to him. Tell him to bury the artefacts. Or the time caps you're leaving. And he'll go ahead and take them off your hands. At this point we need, now need to go and speak to Oldak. You can find Oldak in the northwest corner of Dorgish Khan. He's in the scientist room, same place where you get the Dorgish Khan spheres. On video, I am actually going down to Undak. There was no way I could edit this out so it would look smooth. So I've had to leave this bit in. Sorry about that. So, as I said, up to the northwest corner to speak to Oldak. So, once you talk to him, choose the first option. Then tell him it doesn't actually matter. Then ask them what they want you to do. Tell him you'll go, and we now need to head back down towards the agility area. So in case you've forgotten, all you need to do is head down to the very south of here. And on the west side of the little water trough, you'll find the stairs to climb. Head up them. Stay on this platform and head directly south. And you'll find some stairs to go up. Head up there. This time we want to go east. Until you hit the little lava pot. Go ahead and climb down the stairs. And we need to talk to the goblin inside. Tell him that Oldak sent you here and he needs a pair of stuff. Once you've got that, head back up. And we now need to head all the way back over to Oldak, only this time he's moved. So if you remember where we first found that human in Dorgish Khan, we now need to head there. 
To get there from here, you want to head back the way we came in. So head up the northwestern path. Head down the stairs on the north side. Then head to your east. And then just north of the water trough you'll find Oldak. Go ahead and talk to him. And you'll hand over the two items and in exchange he will give you a crossbow. So with crossbow in hand go ahead and talk to Zanik. Hand him the crossbow. Then choose option 1. And then run through his options. And eventually he'll tell you about the nippers. So, at this point we now need to head back up to where we originally started this quest. So, to get there from here, head north past the markets. And then slowly to your northeast. And eventually you'll see the quest sign just north of that is the stairs we need to go up. So once you're here, head to the southeastern building, same as before. Go ahead and talk to Munich. Ask her what you can do. Tell her you'll talk to him. Then head slightly to your north and you'll find a dwarf in this building here. Go ahead and talk to him. So as soon as you talk to him, choose a second option and then call him a coward. And then head back to the nursery and talk to Munich once again. Tell her you talk to him. And then say nothing, everything is fine. So at this point we now need to go kill the boss if you're a lower level and you need to bank. There is a bank on the northwestern side of this Dorgish Karn area. And yeah, I'd recommend some food and some mage gear as they do melee you. So mage is probably the most useful here. But it's not all that difficult. If you're anywhere between mid and high, you'll be able to kill this without any food at all. So soon as you're ready, head back down to Zanik And talk to him and tell him you are ready. Soon as you do, you'll be back in Bandos' throne room, and it's time for the showdown. So, go ahead and start attacking it. Same as the previous fight with Zanuck, don't use Combust or Bleeds, as you will get a chat option when you kill it. Choose the fourth option and eventually Xanax crossbow will explode and one of the stone statues will come to life. Grab the bolts and at this point you now need to kill it to be able to pick up one of the crossbow items. So as soon as you've killed it pick up another crossbow piece and one of the other statues will come to life. Go ahead and kill this one. And then pick up another piece. And another one will come to life. Kill that. And finally pick up the last piece. And a final statue will come to life. Go ahead and kill it. Soon as you do, 
try to fix the crossbow by putting it back together. As soon as you do that, Aldak will be knocked out. Go ahead and start killing Bandus' avatar again, this time on your own. As soon as he's down, if you happen to have combust or something happening at the same time, it will skip through the chat as you just saw. Equip the bolts. Finish Bandu's avatar off. And then choose the fourth option to use Zarek's crossbow. As soon as you do, you will kill the boss. Once he's dead, go ahead and pick up the pendant. And then talk to Zanek. And take a seat. Say nothing. Then choose whichever option you want. And again. And pass him the pendant. And eventually you'll destroy the pendant. And it's now time to complete this quest. So head on out and through the portal you came in. At this point you'll get a bunch of cutscenes. Tell him thank you. And then you'll have another bunch of cutscenes. At which point you'll get quest complete. Happy days! So, for doing the Chosen Commander, you get 3 quest points, 20k agility strength and thieving XP, access to Xanax Crossbow, also the Banda's Throne Room Agility Arena, and 2 spins on the Squeal of Fortune. The crossbow is probably about the same as a Rune Crossbow, maybe slightly better. But yeah, it's not particularly useful for any kind of high level play. But there are a few things you can do after this quest, which I'll probably put in a separate video sometime. But yeah, you can now get more travelling spheres from Uldak in a nutshell. Pretty easy. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed. And I'll catch you next time. Next up will be Firemaker's Curse. Get in there. Later.